Jonathan Larson with QIT Investigates, and we have a new story up this morning by by me, actually, and uh, I thought I'd talk about it a little bit this morning with you, so thanks for being here uh, for today's edition of TYTI Daily. Uh, the headline on the story is relatively self-explanatory. SBA, that's Small Business Administration data, show disparities in PPP lending to mosques. So if you recall, the SBA issued, um, they released a spreadsheet showing all of the loans that they made. Now, only on loans over $150,000 did they identify who the recipient of the loan was, which makes it pretty difficult to determine overall patterns because we don't know who the vast majority of uh, recipients were because they got less than $150,000. So we had to look at loans over $150,000, ranging up as high as $5 million. And what we found was that it did look like mosques, um, uh, Muslim institutions um, did get loans. There did not seem to be sort of a pattern of discrimination. We found um, loans in red states. We found loans in congressional districts that are represented by some uh, Republicans who would not necessarily be be down with this. There did not seem to be um, discrimination of that nature. And I, I talked to two organizations, Council on American Islamic Relations and Dar al Hijra, a, an Islamic the Islamic Center um, in Virginia both of whom dealt with a lot of other organizations, counseling them through the, the process. And no one, no one said, yes, we've seen a pattern of discrimination here. So what I did was, I, um, I should say, I did this first. I didn't do this because they said that, but I, I, I organized the data because it also talks about, it reveals the names of the lenders for each of these loans. And one thing that that I found was that uh, there were a fair amount when you when you group the loans by religious organization. In other words, they're all classified. Are you a school? Are you a hardware store? Are you a civic organization? Um, are you a church, a house of worship? So I focused looking at houses of worship, and it turned out that um, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase and Bank of America both gave. A, a fair amount of loans to Muslim organizations, but not a lot of the other big banks did. And and I should talk a little bit about the, the broader numbers here. Muslims make up about 1.1% of the U.S. population. However, if I can find the numbers here, Muslim religious institutions accounted on, for only 0.36%, or about one-third of their of the population, of the, compared to the population of religious organizations, reported as receiving more than 150,000 through the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program. So, although Muslims make up 1.1 percent of the population, the only Muslim orga re religious organizations, primarily mosques, obviously, made up only 0.36 percent of recipients over 150,000 dollars. There are potentially some really innocent explanations for this. One might be that because uh, we there is such a small, diffuse number of Muslims throughout the country, it might be that those 1.1% of Americans attend disproportionately smaller churches, smaller mosques. There might simply be fewer large mosques in the country proportionately than there are churches, which would mean that if we were to find out the identities of those institutions getting less than $150,000, we would see more mosques. We would potentially see them overrepresented, but we don't know because we don't have that information. Another factor is that a lot of Muslims consider interest-bearing loans to be against their religion. And the way these loans were supposed to work is they're forgivable if you meet a certain set of conditions, but if you don't, it converts to an interest-bearing loan. So both um, CARE and Dar al-Hijra told me that they knew about Muslim organizations who did not apply for these loans on uh, grounds of, of religious objection. Um, it was simply against their religion. Now, you might be wondering, well, is there some other way to get them uh, this money? And, and I, shouldn't, 
I shouldn't shouldn't ignore the fact that um, uh, I'm I'm a, I'm pretty hinky about the idea of the government giving money to any religious institution. Period. That said, if it's going to be done, it should be done equitably and to organizations of no religion whatsoever. Um, but there is there is something known as Islamic banking, which essentially leans more on profit sharing instead of interest. Uh, and it's it's a sufficient distinction. It, it checks enough of the religious objection boxes that it's a real and growing thing. In fact, Chase even offers it, but most most banks do not. But here's the other thing that, that was going on was that um, there is discrimination uh, especially, um, I shouldn't say that there, there is, there is discrimination in some banks against Muslims. Um, Robert McCaw of care told me, quote, because of the issue of quote, Muslim while banking unquote, where larger banks are known to close the accounts of Muslim organizations are mo our mosques now banking with local credit unions. Finally, is the Trump administration doing as good a job communicating the PPP loan program to the Muslim community as it has done with their Christian counterparts? In other words, a lot of the inequities that are already systemically present in our economic system, in our political system, we potentially saw them manifested in how these loans went out. And the other thing is that the New York Times and others have reported that banks directed these loans, right? Not the SBA. And so the Times reported that the banks gave preference to their biggest, richest clients, right? If you've got a certain bucket of money and it's at your discretion who to lend it to, you're going to give it to the folks, if you have no ethics, <laughs> who need it the least, right? So um, I'll share some of the uh, methodology that we did here. We found that... Um, there were 10,682 PPP recipients that were classified as religious organizations. Of those 10,682, we found 39 that were Islamic. We did this by looking for keywords, including uh, Muslim, Islam, mosque, masjid, I'm probably mispronouncing that, uh, the, uh, the word for mosque, Sunni, and variations of Shia. Uh, in the smallest tranche, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to three hundred and fifty thousand, seven thousand two, seven thousand and two organizations received religious organizations uh, received that amount. Twenty five of which, or zero point three six percent, were Muslim. In the group that got between three hundred and fifty and one million, there were three hundred three thousand and three religious organizations, thirteen of which were Muslim, representing zero point four three percent. In the group, in the group rep that received one to two million dollars, there were 473 religious organizations, one of which was Muslim, representing 0.2 percent. And in the group representing that that received two million to five million dollars, there were 184 recipients, none of whom were Muslim. Which, which to some extent, sort of confirms the suggestion that you find disproportionately more Muslim borrowers, more Muslim institutions at the smaller levels. Whether or not that was sufficient to compensate or not, we do not know. And, and CARE said, we shared our findings with CARE, and they said it certainly does raise a number of questions. This is McCaw speaking, who I think I quoted earlier. Uh, and, and he made the point that without a complete picture on the PPP loan program's data, it's hard to know whether these numbers are a cause of concern for mosques and Islamic community centers. And I should also point out that, uh, as I mentioned, Chase and Bank of America, they both gave loans to multiple religious institutions. Of the other 12 of America's 15 biggest banks, only three other loans um, were made to Muslim organizations by three banks. 10 of the top 15 banks in the US did not make any loans whatsoever to um, religious organizations, Muslim religious organizations. As as um, Saif Rahman of um, Dar al-Hishra told me, they lean disproportionately, mosques and Muslim institutions lean disproportionately on smaller and community banks. And that's what we found 
in the PPP program as well. Now, currently, PPP is dead. It's over. It ended. And there are no talks going on in Washington to renew it. Democrats want more money than Republicans are willing to shell out. And so the talks are dead. But what this does tell us is that if it's renewed, there are it, the program is mirroring inequities and discriminatory patterns that are already present and problematic in our current lending institutions. So that's, that's the sum and substance of our report today. I'll put the link in the description so you can go check it out yourself. Uh, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the chat and see what you folks have to say today. And good morning, and thanks for being here. Adrian Benningfield says, no religious institution of any type should get money, especially those evangelicals. Well, so this is where I have a problem with this. Uh, my inclination is to agree with you, Adrian, but the point of these programs is not to help specific institutions. It's to prevent massive economic collapse. Now, you could, you could argue, and I probably would, that the way to have done this was not to give money to the institutions, but to give money to people directly, right? And that way... And, and essentially freeze a lot of the transfer of capital that goes on in a capitalist society so that the companies wouldn't have to lay off their workers because their benefits would have been provided for, their pay would have been provided for, just not to the institution directly. So they could say, we're not going to pay you for this period, but you'll be fine because you're getting government relief, which would mean that no money was going to a religious institution. So I would certainly think, I, I think that's more than just a, a, a fig leaf to, to provide, make a difference there. But since, of course, we can never actually just give money to people, um, I can see the thinking there. However, I should point out, I think it was The Atlantic had a report talking about how the SBA granted exemptions to religious organizations only um, from a, a clause which said that if you are part of a larger organization, you don't qualify unless you're a church. That certainly way out of line. So organizations like the Boy Scouts, Planned Parenthood, they, individual clinics or, or chapters or whatever, they could not get money because they were part of a larger organization. If you were a Catholic church, you're definitely part of a larger organization. But because of this exemption, which they said was because we, we uh, are respecting the religious right, the religious belief in a hierarchical system. So now having a big church with little churches, that's now considered part of the religious freedom that entitles them to special treatment. So basically, I basically agree with you, Adrian. Not that it matters whether I agree or not, but those are my thoughts. And thanks for sharing that, um, Adrian. Adrian Benningfield says, did JL shave his head? Uh, I'm not sure if it counts as shaving, if you buzz it, but yes, I did. Imperator One says, has anyone heard from Caranola lately? That's an excellent question, come to think of it. Um, I hope someone will chime in if they have. Uh, Gira Brown points me to the comments on a previous post that I'll have to check out. Thank you for that. Hello, Diamond Onyx. Uh, Weena Jensen says, there's no such thing as an innocent explanation here. There's an abundance of ways, apparently, to suppress the ones that are not appreciated by the ones in power. Well, I disagree. I do think there are some innocent explanations. But, but what I mean by that is there's no ill intent. There's just um, an absence of smarts or um, a failure to address systemic inequity. Imperator One says the CARES Act was a paltry sum to the poor with the vast majority of the money sent to the rich and well-off. That is correct. 
John Rivera says, why is the government giving tax dollars to religious institutions anyway? Well, the, the point is to prevent the entire collapse of society, I suppose. Although I'm not sure that propping up religious organizations <laughs> uh, hastens that or, or impedes it. Um, but uh, in theory, in theory, the idea was to keep jobs in place and to allow people to eat in the interim. And as Imperator One points out, um, they are loans. However, um, the loans will be forgiven if certain conditions are met, having to do with job retention and things like that. Adrian Benningfield says they should send a certain amount to each citizen per month versus the unemployment insurance. And, and you know, oh, the, the pandemic has, we've talked about this before, has sort of brilliantly crystallized and and adrenalized or steroidified all the the reasons for socialism, right? Universal basic income. We don't have to go through all this crazy stuff if everyone just has universal basic income. It wouldn't matter. Grateful Heretic says, hi, Gira, thanks for the heads up. I don't think Jonathan misses a thing in the comments. I do. <laughs> I appreciate the thought, Grateful Heretic, but I do. <laughs> Margaret Ballenbau says, I was six minutes late. Dope. Lemon Lime says, if churches don't pay taxes, then they don't need money from the government. Imperator One says, I'm happy to lend money, even at low interest, to religious institutions, but I agree that interest is a necessity. Adolfo Serrano says, and I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get from here, says, TYT, in all caps, it is just as TYT in lowercase. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but okay. Um, uh, Chasmel, um, I've, I've, I'm not showing your comment because it's um, it's calling for violence, and we don't do that, so. Hopefully you will rephrase in a way that does not incite people to commit violence or other crimes and share your thinking rather than your call, your specific call for illegal action. Try again, please. Be nice to people. Uh, let's see what else we have here. John Rivera says, I want them making their own money in these times. I want nuns and priests delivering my Popeye's chicken sandwich on my porch. Adrian Benningfield says, evangelical super churches deserve loan money less than any other group since they bring in so much money from their victims. Margaret Bellambao says, mayhaps we put a prefix before any questions or statements for our earnest reporter. Q for questions and S for statements. That could be helpful. Thank you for the suggestion, Margaret. Weena Jensen says, this chat is turning into one long greeting session, which is why I'm so quiet in between remarks, because uh, 
you guys are all chatting away with each other and saying hello and all that stuff. So I'm I'm trying to get the substantive 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 stuff. Weena Jensen also points out that I must agree with her at all times. Thank you. Noted. Duly noted. I will endeavor to be better. There's no way I'm getting to all your comments today, guys. I'm so lost already. D. Scully says, this story seems so typical of the America I know. After denying a minority group access to a benefit, I expect them to blame the minority group afterwards for being laser che lazy cheaters taking advantage. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's fascinating to see how systemic... Thank you for that, D. Scully. It's fascinating to see how systemic discrimination, and I mean that in the broadest sense, leads to consequences that then feed stories about the victims of that discrimination. Wiener Jensen uh, just kicked in 50 Danish kroner, I assume for me, <laughs> agreeing to agree with her always in all things, which of course I won't actually do. But thank you for the super chat. Just want to make a distinction. Donations welcome. Payoffs for agreeing with you, not happening. So thank you very much for the donation, Weena Jensen, as always. Pretty regular uh, giver, I should point out now. This is this is getting to be a habit with you, Weena. Thank you very much for that. Okay, let me see where I am. Um, John Rivera says, Chase and Bank of America true progressive bastions right and that's the thing it's it's a little bit counterintuitive here um but it also turns out for instance that chase is is engaged in islamic banking right uh which you wouldn't normally necessarily expect but there's money to be made so why wouldn't they right i think i think uh we tend to over overestimate how ideologically uh rigid these guys are if there's money they're going to chase it Christian Fatality says, my cat's breath smells like cat food. Possibly, possibly one of my favorite quotes from The Simpsons of all time. Alice Murphy says, how many people are employed by these churches? Uh, I don't know if you're referring to Christian churches or the Muslim churches, um, but... Uh, the, the answer is, I don't know. And some of them did give estimates of jobs saved and all that. But um, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't go down that path. So I don't have anything terribly useful to share with you on that front. Sorry. Lemon Lime says, what does it matter, the people employed by the institution? Well, I think, I think the point is that the PPP is supposed to protect jobs, to keep them in place, right? To a, a temporary life raft so that on the other side, once we do the things we didn't do that we were supposed to do, the job would still be there, right? That's the, that's the real thing you want to avoid is having these job losses uh, metamorphosed from temporary layoffs to permanent layoffs. Once the job is gone, then we're in real trouble. It's much, much harder to create a job out of thin air or to convince people to create, uh, uh, you know, a new position than it is to find someone to fill a position that is on hold. There's a budget line for they know how to pay for it and all of that. Once the line disappears, that money, get whatever money is left, gets accounted for elsewhere in the organization to convince them to hire someone new. You now have to do the job, and by you, I mean reality, the world, has to convince the organization that it will take in more money if it invests in the creation of a new job. Uh, an existing job is an in-place mechanism that creates revenue already, and all you're doing is keeping it going. To start up a new job, you have to make an outlay at the front with the hope that it will generate income, not necessarily directly. Most jobs aren't like sales that directly generate revenue. There's support that make that revenue generation possible. We just got another uh, super chat, this time from Adrian Benningfield says, JL, I don't see agreeing with anyone all the time 
as good. Well, well, I agree with you, weirdly enough. Thank you very much for the super chat, Adrian. I appreciate the five bucks. Although, as I pointed out yesterday, it does not go to me. Just so, just so we're clear. All right, what else do we have here? Um, Paul Paul Cuthill says, "Being in America right now must be scary, but who is making it worse, the COVID nineteen or Mister Sad Sack Trump?" I like to think of it as a team effort, I suppose. Mr. Elder says religious institutions are rich and powerful already. They don't need the money. They fool millions into giving them money already. Well, some absolutely are. And, and you know, as an atheist, I'm inclined to think um, they all fool, not necessarily intentionally, people into, into believing something that's not true. But, but keep in mind, a lot, a lot, the majority... Of churches are small little things. Uh, they were a lot of them were struggling before the pandemic. Um, a lot of them were struggling before shutdown orders. Um, certainly, uh, some of the mosques, some of the bigger mosques, some of the bigger Islamic institutions that didn't file for loans under that category of religious institution. When I looked them up online, they were not exactly massive. <laughs> physical things. Some of them, some of their websites had pictures and not all of them were exactly big, impressive, uh, you know, physically dominant institutions. And these were some of the more noteworthy ones that we're talking about. And they were small. So certainly not the case with, with um, Islam for the most part in the U.S., but even, you know, on the Judeo-Christian side of things, a lot of them are small. And don't have a lot of money. Doesn't mean they're not part of larger organizations which do have a lot of money. Alice Murphy says, oh, we just I just lost. No, there, there you are, Alice. Alice Murphy says each individual should get money directly, not through their employer, just like healthcare. And we just got another live chat. This one from Mike Berto. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Mike. Uh, Mike writes, quote, no more turning away from the weak and the weary, no more turning away, unquote, as David Gilmour sang in the beautiful haunting on the turning away. Um, I think I remember that song. I think I remember that song. I'm going to have to go check that out now, Mike. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, and, and it's sort of, it's sort of um, analogous or parallel to the journalistic uh, mandate of comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Um we have a moral obligation, not just as journalists, but as human beings, to take care of those who need it, right? Otherwise, what are we doing? So thank you for that, Mike. Chris Lopez writes, but why does corporate America get free money, but we can't? Well, that's trickle down, Chris, right? They get it so that they can, through their largesse, bestow some of it upon us if we do the things that the machine tells us we need to do. Christian Blanco says the final battle between Christianity and truth has begun. I'm pretty sure that's a quote from a movie or something, but I can't place it right now. Uh, Adolfo Serrano says things happen for a reason. I disagree, if I may. Um, yes, obviously everything has a cause, but that does not mean that everything has a purpose. And I think that's actually a fairly dangerous way of looking at things. So if you don't mind uh, my, my dissent here, Adolfo, I would push back on that and, and question that. Um, it can be used to justify a lot of horrible things, right? What was the reason for the Holocaust? When we say a reason, that implies a purpose, a good that came out of it that was worth the price paid. There are bad things that happen in the world that do not happen for good reasons. Uh, after 9-11, a lot of our leaders went around, around talking about how this will make us stronger. That's not how strength works. 
um, you know, blowing up our landmarks and killing 3,000 people is not to, does not better us. And I think history would show it made us dramatically worse and weaker in the world. Does it feel like we're stronger right now? Lemon Lime uh, echoes, although probably said before I said it, that only a few religious institutions are rich and powerful. Mr. Elder says, regardless if they are rich or not, all the religious institutions are corrupt. Adrian Benningfield says Mormons have tithing directly tied into their religion. No way they should get it either since they have their institutions set up to help their partition, their, their parishioners. Um, I, I, think, I think tithing is not exclusive to Mormons. It's, it seems to be much more institutionalized, certainly. But if you have no income, then there is no tithing. So... I don't know if that counts as chicken or egg, or chicken the egg or not, but um, I can see the I can see the issues on both sides, which of course is the failing of <laughs> many journalists. Uh, Margaret kicks in ten bucks, says saying to go to toward your nourishment, maybe energy giving beverage of choice. Um, thank you, Margaret. I hope uh, I hope you're not suggesting that I'm coming off as low energy <laughs> here because that would be bad because this is supposed to be entertainment, right? Um, and, and again, I do want to clarify that the money you folks donate, and thank you so much. I don't know what's led to the outpouring today of it, uh, uh, especially, but um, Margaret, I do want to assure you, the money does not go into my pocket. I will not be using it to buy anything. Uh, it goes to TYT generally, which then uses it as for, for all of its operations. TYT investigates uh, the main show, TYT, Rebel HQ, rent, utilities, all, all that kind of stuff, um, all of which does make this possible. So in, in a roundabout way, it does it does make this possible. But I just I just want to make sure that everyone knows I'm not going ka-ching and, and taking, walking away from here with 10 bucks. But thank you very much, Margaret, especially since you refuse to tell me how to pronounce your last name. So I continue to fumble with it every single time. So that's very generous of you given my mangling of your last name. Tempo Dan says the same reason we prop up cruise lines, companies that get exempted taxes from taxes shouldn't get relief, makes no sense. I, I also think though that it, anytime there's a government program where the money goes out and it doesn't require means testing or needs assessment, it doesn't force people to go through these hoops of demonstrating that they've deserved it. I like that. I like that. There's, there's, there's not a lot of, there's something sour and toxic at the heart of any government program that, that, basically forces people to justify, you know, getting the basic things that we need to operate and function in the world. <laughs> Margaret says, OMG, he nearly said my last name correctly, but of course you won't tell me which time it was that I said that, so I can't re I can't replay it now. Now Lemon Lime says, this goes to JL to buy a non-wall-colored shirt. Uh, this is actually, this is actually, um, sorry, I hit the mic. This is actually my, my dad's shirt, um, but uh, yeah, I probably should not have worn a, a wall-colored shirt, or at a minimum, I should do a green screen so my head can just kind of like do the do the floaty thing. Uh, thank you. And again, 
I'm not using your super chats to uh, to go out and buy stuff. But thank you, Lemon Lime. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Elder says, you might get upset with me over saying that all religious institutions are corrupt. But mind you, I'm talking about the people at the top of those corrupt religious institutions. Look, I mean, one of the... Uh, one of the issues I sometimes have with TUIT is how broadly the term corrupt gets defined. You can certainly define corrupt broadly enough to implicate any institution which is premised on the idea of selling people uh, a story for which there is no factual basis and which conflicts with physics. So if that's your, if that's your definition, then yeah, you can make the argument that religious institutions are corrupt. You, Mr. Elder, it sounds like, are making the more specific, narrow argument that the people at the top um, of those religious institutions are corrupt. That presumes there is a top. And I think that that nicely excludes some of the smaller churches we were talking about who, and look, some of them might be corrupt as well. There's a lot of one-man band scam operations out there for sure. But there's there are also a lot of small local churches. Um, there was one in South Bend that that I went to. Uh, the, the guy was controversial for sure. Um, but, you know, I saw and met the people there who were being helped uh, by that church, homeless people, uh, hungry people. So I think I think we should resist blanket characterizations generally. Adrian Benningfield says, I am for the government taking over water, power, medicine, and us not paying for medications as long as it's not like someone like Trump and this administration and his administration. D. Scully says, in political science terms, people who care about institutions are called establishmentarians. Establishmentarians are rightists. Their solutions involve protecting the haves and institutions. It's interesting you say that because... I feel like I care about institutions. I just, and you'll, this is where you will call me a Pollyanna as you have before. I tend to think that institutions can be made to work uh, in an egalitarian fashion. Uh, Tempo Dan says, JL, is there an increase in crime as a nation lately? Seems like people are getting desperate. So, I haven't seen national figures, and I don't think we tend to get national figures except on an annual basis. So everything other than that is, is sort of cherry-picked and anecdotal. But I have seen, for instance, in New York, um, yes, there are, there's, there's, there are more shootings and more murders. However, crime broadly does not appear to be up. And, and look, when you toss 30-plus million people out of work, want... Uh, deprivation becomes a motive, but also you're just generally destabilizing society. So even if someone isn't hungry or doesn't isn't trying to feed a hungry family, they are still going to be socially, culturally speaking, more susceptible to antisocial behaviors. Okay, um, I think <laughs> uh, Ranked Midget says, so a single mother who ca can't feed her kids is the same as a single mother who lives with her working adult children? Absurd. There isn't enough to go around. Actually, there is enough to go around. There's a lot to go around. Um, it feels like there isn't enough to go around because some people are hoarding it. That's, it's, it's fairly simple. Okay, guys, I am going to, I'm going to say thanks and, and, um, and take care. So uh, as I've mentioned before, I'm going on vacation next week. So um, I will be primarily vanished. I might check in on Facebook now and again. So you can, you can go take a look, uh, go find us on Facebook. Maybe I'll show up there. Um, but uh, my guess is that you won't see me next week. And uh, our video output in general is going to go down. So please just consider this a temporary status. We'll be back again um, 
when I get back. In the meantime, and as always, please take care of each other. Please take care of yourselves. And uh, thanks a lot.